So response is like uh, you see if you have got a structure and when you apply the lateral load on it or any kind of load not just the lateral load so here as we are talking in the context of the earthquake so i'm saying the lateral load so if you are applying the lateral load let's say p and when you do that uh, the structure will definitely displace like this okay so this displacement that this structure has shown due to the application of the load this delta deflection is known as the response this is known as the response of the structure of the structure similarly if this delta is time varied you know if it is varying with the time then delta by if i do time then it will get the velocity so and if the velocity is varying with time we'll get the acceleration so when a structure is loaded it will give three kinds of responses the first one is the displacement that is delta so the second one is the velocity and third one is the acceleration so this acceleration is also known as the studio acceleration so these three things are called the response of that structure and assessment of these three things is done in response spectrum analysis you either find the delta you find the velocity you find the acceleration and the thing is that uh, when this structure is loaded so let's say at time t is equal to zero and as the response spectrum analysis is a dynamic analysis so uh, the time factor also comes into play so when t is equal to zero it will be at its mean position when let's say when it's uh, t is equal to one second in one second there will be this much of displacement uh, let's say it's only two mm of displacement uh, as an example and let's say at uh, this is at t is equal to one second and at t is equal to two two second let's say the displacement is now five mm okay this top displacement is now five mm and at let's say at t is equal to okay not here and let's say at t is equal to three second now the displacement is only let's say three mm right so in this case you can see that the maximum displacement is occurring at t is equal to two seconds that is five mm and let's say at uh so the let's say the earthquake or this lateral load lasted only for the three seconds in that case uh, you get the maximum displacement of 5 mm at t is equal to 2 seconds so what i what i am trying to say over here is that we are not concerned about what the displacement is at here what the displacement is at here what the displacement is at here so we are concerned about what is the maximum displacement of that structure okay why is that because you see that if we build a structure that will take this maximum displacement so that will resist this maximum displacement this can definitely resist this displacement this can definitely resist this displacement and obviously this one as well so due to this reason we are concerned with the maximum response of any structure so if we design any structure for that maximum response that structure can definitely withstand any other response so this all thing we do in the response spectrum analysis and how we do that uh, let's talk about it so the image that was over here so this is about the ground acceleration versus the time curve so it shows the variation of the ground acceleration with time so this is your uh, mean acceleration and when let's say time is like this at uh, is, if it is let's say one second then your ground acceleration value is something like 0 0.05 uh, meter per second square right so g uh, meter per second square when the time is like two seconds so you got the negative in the negative direction 0 0.3 uh, meter per second square so this is how the ground acceleration varies with time let's say that we got three kinds of structures so the first structure we got time t1 the second structure we got time t2 and the third structure we got time as t3 so time t1 time t2 and time t3 and let's say that uh, they all have got the same damping ratio as well and when this structure a is subjected 
to the ground motion that we just saw over there the ground acceleration curve so if that structure is subjected to the same ground motion so at time you know one second how much was the ground acceleration and at time two second how much was the uh, ground acceleration if we subject that structure i mean the structure a that ground acceleration and if we measure and if we measure the structure's displacement let's say delta in different time frame then we'll get certain curve right we'll get certain curve so displacement will be higher at certain time the displacement will be lower at certain other time okay we'll get something like this and let's say that uh, the delta that is maximum is uh, let's say it's 2 mm here at any certain time so it may be like two second three second four second or one minute you know it can be anything so uh, next structure that has got the natural frequency as or is or its natural time period as t2 and if you also apply the same ground motion to this structure and if you also measure the uh, displacement of this structure with time then you will also get another curve let's say the maximum displacement of this curve or this structure was uh, let's say uh, 4 mm and it was at time t is equal to let's say 6 6 seconds okay it can be anything for building c so for building c with time period t3 and if you apply the same ground motion to this building as well so you will get you will get the displacement with time curve so this is your time in x-axis and displacement in the y-axis and let's say that the maximum displacement is uh, 3 mm and it's at time t is equal to let's say one second so now what we do is that now what we do is that we make a curve so we make a curve so we draw a curve okay in the x-axis what we do we pl plot the natural frequency uh, let me call n so natural frequency in the y-axis what i plot is that i plot the delta max right so for uh structure one the time period uh, is t1 uh, let me say that if this t1 natural frequency is like two seconds and for this one is three seconds and this one is four seconds so t1 will be here two seconds three seconds will be here four seconds will be here right and for this the maximum displacement let's say this is 1 mm 2 mm 3 mm 4 mm okay so maximum displacement is uh, 2 mm and for this one the maximum displacement is uh, 4 mm and for this one the maximum displacement is 3 mm so now you will get a curve like this so this curve that you get by plotting the maximum displacement or you can say the maximum responses with respect to the natural frequency of the structures that is called as the response spectrum curve response spectrum curve okay so this is how you get the response spectrum curve you get your structures you apply the certain ground motion to that structure and you measure the response of that structure and you draw the maximum response of that structure and similarly for the second structure you do the same thing you assign the same ground motion okay you cannot assign the different ground motion to this structure and different ground motion to this structure so you have to assign the same ground motion to all the structures and you also get the maximum response of that structure so here i'm taking the displacement you can take the velocity or you can take the pseudo acceleration as well and for the other structure also you do the same thing and after that you plot the natural frequency of those structures in the x-axis and you plot the maximum maximum response of those structures in the y-axis and you get a curve so this curve is known as the response spectrum curve so why we need to make this response spectrum curve so here i have given the example of only three structures so let's say that you did the same thing for like thousand structures so those thousand structures might have you know a lot of natural frequencies that you can plot f within the x-axis curve from let's say 0 0.1 second to like 10 seconds we have got all the frequencies covered 0 0.1 second 0 0.2 second 3 4 5 and let's say up to 10 seconds or 20 or or one minute uh, you have all the, the natural frequencies covered right so i'll just take 10 second uh, time frame as an example okay 
and for all those structures what you got you got all the maximum values and you get a curve like like this <laughs> so this is a funny curve now what you do is that so you get the maximum displacement delta max right with uh, this is your response quantity now you are going to make a structure in a certain area this certain area you assume that it is subjected to the same ground motion that you apply to these structures to get delta max the ground motion that you saw in the first picture so what you do now is that so what you do now is that uh, you get the height of that building okay you get the base dimension of that building using that you find the time period so natural time period so when you find the natural time period what it says is that if you got two structures let's say a and structure b if these structures have got time period t1 and this structure has got time period t2 if t1 is equal to t2 in that case the maximum response maximum response uh, let's say this is the maximum response of t1 is delta 1 t2 is delta 2 in that case delta 1 is equal to delta 2 the maximum response of both the structures is same if they have got the same natural frequency okay. so using this principle what you can do is that so you got your structure you are you got your natural time period let's say the time period is uh, one second and it lies somewhere here using this graph what you can do you can now find the maximum displacement of that structure even before you have constructed it or even before the structure has been subjected to any kind of earthquake load and now what you can do is that you can construct your structure or you can say you can design your structure so that it resists the this much of displacement value so this is the use of the response spectrum curve and this is the use of the response spectrum analysis so i hope the concept was clear